Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSP lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. This is 54th lecture. In the last couple of lectures I started uh, solving lot of problems and giving different kind of solutions to understand interpretation. So let me continue from where I had stopped. Let me take uh, some more interesting problems associated with uh, IR mass spectrometry as well as NMR. Now I have a question fully based on IR uh, data. You can see here determine the structure or possible structures for a compound with formula C phi H10 N2 and the spectra spectrum is given here. And as I mentioned, first you should look into the molecular formula here and then once after looking, uh, we should find out hydrogen deficiency index. So that formula also I am sure you are familiar with it. So if you just consider here 6, this will be 5, here nothing is there, plus 1 here. So now 2 is the deficiency. That means possibly there can be a ring or two double bonds or there can be triple bond. So let us look into it now. First, let us try to analyze. There is a, a signal in the region 23. That means n is also there, and there is a signal means you can think of something like C triple bond M nitrile group, and then this would also give you about presence of CH. And then we have several peaks are there. Fingerprint region it's very difficult to identify without much knowledge, and also we can see nothing is there in the 1600. So that means probably there is no aromatic group here. If the aromatic group is not there, then possibly two are there means there should be a triple bond as well. That information has come from here. So now we read out some of the points I have made about this problem when only minimum data is given. The index of hydrogen deficiency is calculated just I showed you it is 2. A glance at the spectrum shows a prominent peak near 20 to 50. So it, this has to be for nitrile C triple bond N or an alkyne C double bond C. An alkyne would appear closer to 2150 centimeter, while a nitrile would appear at the value of observed in the spectrum. So that means now C double bond C is ruled out, so it should be a C double bond N or triple bond N. Since the index of hydrogen deficiency has a value of 2, that it fits a compound with a triple bond. Triple bond is there, the value will be 2. The remaining nitrogen atom would like to be an amine. So in that case, what happens if one is going as a nitrile group, say triple bond N, other one should be, yes, NH2 should be there in it. Unfortunately, the region between 3600 to 3200 does not reveal easily what type of amine may be present. So that means if NH is there, we could see a prominent peak between 3200 to 3600, so that is not there. So the region is often obscured by the presence of water in the same or from weak water peaks from other parts of the molecule. However, a primary amine should show a prominent doublet while the secondary amine should show a singlet. So since no prominent peak appear between 3600 to 3200, we can conclude that this, this is a nitrile with an attached tertiary amino group. So that means possibly it is not primary amine or secondary amine, it should be a tertiary amine. So in that case, the structure is going to be something like this. So now we have dimethyl amino group is there and then we have SCN is there. And now for curiosity, I have also taken 1HNMR for this one and 1HNMR you can identify 1, 2, 3 different type of signals here and we have 3 signals are there. And then if we just look into these two, these two should show a singlet that comes here. And then this would show a triplet and this would show a triplet. So CH2, both are CH2. So both of them will show a triplet, two triplets are there. So that is it. So problem is solved. Now this is the structure and this 
nicely fits into this 1H NMR spectrum shown here. And also for curiosity, I have also taken 13C NMR spectrum for this molecule here. And if you look into 13C, you identify how many non-equivalent signals are there. So these two are integral 1, 2, 3, 4 should be there. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. And 4 can be assigned very nicely. And this is 119. Astronaut, this comes here. And then these two will be here because they are on N. And then this is close to N, so it comes here. And then this is coming here. We have confirmed with the same molecule when you take. So it gives the expected uh, spectrum in case of 1H as well as 13C. So this is 3-dimethylaminopropane nitril. I have four different molecules are there. For each of the compounds, indicate the number of structurally distinct groups of carbon and hydrogen atoms. It is not to uh, specifically tell the chemical shift value. It's very difficult. Okay, uh, nobody would ask you all the information. One the thing is you should be able to tell how they are going to split or at least as simple as how many different type of you know distinct groups of carbon and hydrogen are there. For this one, what we should do is we should go for symmetry here. For example, if we consider a, a C2 axis of rotation, so that would make this one, this one identical and this one this one identical and here we do not have any hydrogen. So, what would be? So, H1 if you consider 1H and MR two signals will be there. And then if you look into 13C for this molecule again with the same analogy. So, there is one here, two here and three here and this side it is identical. So, that means in 1H and MR spectrum of this molecule you expect two different type of signals for hydrogen atoms and then in case of 13C one should expect three different type of single resonances. So, here. So, this is the answer for this one. Now, we look into this here. We have CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2. So, CH2. So, if you just look into this one, it appears like uh, only two type of signals are there. That is not the case here. For example, this one if you see here, it is surrounded by two methylene groups and this one is also surrounded by two methylene groups whereas this one is surrounded by one methylene group and one methyl group and same thing is true for this one. So, that means these two are of one type and then this and this will be of another type and this one and this one will be another type. That means 1 H NMR should show here three signals and also similarly the same rule appears here 1, 2, 3 identical ones are there 13 C also shows 3 distinct uh, signals for this molecule here. And of course, if you are curious you can just see here it can show a quintet and this can also show a quintet identical whereas this one will show a triplet further coupled with this one. This would show a quintet here. I have not uh, plotted uh, NMR for these things because I am asking a different type of question here. Now, let us look into this molecule here. So, of course, this one one can do like this 3 C 2 axis of rotation one can consider this is a symmetric molecule here. So, here if C H 3 are there this is one type of group here and then we have another one here. So, that means only two type of signals you can expect for this molecule here. All C H 2 methylene groups are identical and all methyl groups are identical here. So, we get two signals and in case of 13 C 1, 2, 3, 13 C we expect 3 because 1 here, 1 here and 1 here. So, that means quaternary carbon, methyl carbon and methylene carbon 3 signals are anticipated for this one. Then here again you can see uh, C 2 axis is there and this will be identical. So, this will be identical this will be identical and then this is one more here. So, this one. So, that means here also you can see 3 here and then if you look into carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different type of carbons you can expect here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5 different carbon environments are there here as a result we are expecting 5. So, this is the answer for these questions. The first one will show two distinct group of hydrogen atoms and three distinct group of distinct carbon signals and the second will show three hydrogen uh, distinct multiplets 
and then 3 for different carbon atoms and in this one 2 and 3 here 3 and 5. So, minimum knowledge of uh, symmetry and looking into simple operation rotation, rotation reflection you should be able to guess uh, the magnetically non-equivalent or magnetically and chemically equivalent nuclei very readily and assigning and understanding would be very easy. Now, one more example here. Let us look into this example here. Again, similar problem here. Uh, so, this molecule is there. Again, for this molecule also we can look into C2 axis of rotation is there here, C2. So, as a result what happens? This would be identical and this one and this one. So, you, you can see here three hydrogen atoms. Three will be there and in case of carbon, one, two, three, four. Four signals are anticipated here. One, two, three and four. Four carbon signals are expected and three hydrogen signals are expected here. Whereas in this case, again, very similar here. In case of this one, this is very similar to the previous one we discussed here. So, we have H here and then this one here. So, that means two signals are anticipated in case of 1 HNMR and also here 1, 2, 3 signals are expected in case of 13 C. 3 signals are expected in case of 13 C. And now, if you look into this here, hydrogen, this is distinct and this is distinct, this is distinct, this is distinct. So, we expect 4, all are different, we expect 4 different signals. For example, this will show two doublets, this will show a singlet and this will show a singlet. And then 13 C, if you look into it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, we expect 7 distinct 13 C signals for this molecule here. If you take out one fluorine here, let us say if it is not there, then it is much simplified. So, let us look into another set of molecules here, same analogy here. For each of the compound, we have to identify distinct group of carbon and hydrogen atoms in their respective spectra, 1H here and 13C again. So, here these two are identical and then we have 1H and then these are CH3, they are all identical. So, we can expect for this molecule 3 and then if you look into carbon 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, 4 we are expecting. So, quaternary carbon is there and here we have another carbon and we have two carbons are identical. So, methyl, uh, all methyls of this one is identical and then we have one. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 signals are expected for this one. And in case of here, we expect again these two are equivalent and then these two are equivalent. So, we expect two signals and then 13 C, 1, 2, 3, we expect three signals here. Next for this molecule here, again very nice, we can see C2 axis of rotation is there. So, this one, this one is same, this one, this one is same and this one, this one is same. So, we are expecting here also three signals here and then if you look into carbon, one, two, three, four signals we can expect here, okay. so four signals. Only thing is little bit of uh, symmetry and understanding symmetry operations if you are familiar with, we can see similarities between different fragments here and then anticipating or identifying distinct groups shouldn't be a problem here. In the first one we have three hydrogen signals in its 1 HNMR and four signals in 13 C whereas in case of two here, two and three each and in case of this one, 3 and 4 each, we can expect here. Okay, so, now another interesting question is there, following three compounds are put in three unlabeled vials and some information is given about their 13 C NMR spectra, match the spectral features with corresponding compound from the list. So, what are those compounds provided? 1, 2, 3 trichlorobenzene, 1, 2, 4 trichlorobenzene and 1, 3, 5 trichlorobenzene. All are trichlorobenzene, but positions of fluorine atoms are different.
So, I have written all 3 substituted chlorobenzenes here, it is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 here, it is 1, 2, 4 here, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 5 here, 1, 3, 5 here. So, now uh, what is the question here? two peaks between 125 to 140. So, we have to identify now, if we just look into the different distinct carbon signals are there for each one, then answering these questions will be a problem. Now, if you look into this one, of course, you can see here, uh, rotation is there. So, as a result, what happened? This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, and this is 4 signals can be seen here. And in this case, what would happen? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all 6 are different, all 6 are different, all are different, whereas in this case, we will see only 1, 2, 2 signals here. So, that means 2 peaks between 1, 2, 5, 1, 25 and 1, 40 will be for 1, 3, 5. So, we can pick this one here. Next, 6 peaks between 1, 25 to 1, 40 ppm is for 1, 2 and 4, highly unsymmetrical this one. Okay, the last one is very easy now identifying, but still we can analyze. So, 4 peaks, 4 peaks should be 1, 2, 3 here. This is how we can answer these questions very easily, provided we write the structure and look into how symmetrical the molecule is to identify equivalent, magnetically and chemically equivalent nuclei. So, now another one. Now, following 3 compounds are put in 3 again unlabeled vials and some information is also given about the 13 CNMR spectra, match the spectral features with corresponding information provided about each one. So, now we have 4 tetrachlorobenzene. So, tetrachlorobenzene also we are considering 3 molecules having different positions of chlorine in these molecules. So, first let me write 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. Next 1, 2, 3, 5. 1, 2, 3, 5 here. Next, 1, 2, 4, 5. Okay, I will write 1, 2, 4, 5. So, now let us look into the symmetry, where any symmetry elements are there. Yes, we can consider here. P2 is there in this fashion, but it does not really degenerate whether we consider like this here, yes, it is possible. So, this is ruled out, whereas this one is possible here. So, that means basically 1, 2, 3. Yeah, we have 3 identical ones are there here, 3. As far as 13 C is concerned, 1, 2, 3. So, 1, 2, 3 will be, so 3 will be there here. Okay, next, if we consider this one here, still we can see some symmetry here. So, with this one, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 are there here, 4 identical ones are there, 4 13 C signals will be there and then in this case you can rotate this way, so 1, 2 are there here, so 2 are there here. So, that means basically the 2 peaks between is for this one, 1, 2. You take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 4, 5. So, this one we can say and next 4 are there. 4 means this should 1, 2, 3, 5. So, this one and then with this one 1, 2, 3, 4 signals are there. So, this one is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 are there. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 
five. So this one will be uh, four signals, which would be two, three, five. That is done. So now, uh, for this one, one, two signals, two signals will be there. This is for one, two, four, five. The last one is this one is left here. Obviously, three peaks here. This will be one, two, three, four. One, two, one, one, two, three, four will be this one. So we can identify in this fashion here. Yeah. So let us look into one more example here. Predict the one edge splitting pattern for the hydrogen in the red color in the following compounds. So here this one is the red one. So this one should show a septet here uh, because six equivalent uh, will be coupled. And whereas this one, because of one side nitrogen is there, other side oxygen is there, it is not coupling, it will show a singlet. And whereas in this case, this will be showing a doublet. And then here, they will be showing both are coupled to equivalent one, this is a quintet. And then here, this will be showing a quadrat. And then this will show a triplet. So let us look into it now. A septet, yes. And then a singlet, this is a doublet and then this is again a triplet, and this is a quadrat, and this is a quintet. So like that, we should be able to predict it. So let me come up with more examples in my next lecture. Until then, have an excellent time.